Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. As you can see, we're looking at the Game Boy Color this time. Uh, now, the screens on these, they're not backlit or frontlit, in fact, they're not lit at all. So, you've got to get it at the right light. I'll show you that in a minute to be able to see the display. Uh, now, there are a couple of uh, solutions to this, the latest one being uh, a new screen here from McWill. Uh, now, I've got to point out, this is a kind of um, a free, this was sent to me free of charge uh, in order to review this and give my opinion and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'll try and be as unbiased as I can. Uh, I'm already kind of biased a little bit, and I'm going to admit that right from the start, in the sense that I've got a lot of respect for McWill, Marco. Uh, he's a chap based in Germany and uh, initially produced a screen for the Atari Lynx. Um, I think it was the Mark II originally, but then he did a Mark I screen as well and followed up with the Game Gear. I've covered those on my channel um, earlier on uh, and the fantastic screens. So I'm expecting nothing but high quality here and it does look that way. You know, if you look at the assembly, we'll have a close look at the board in a minute, but yeah, the um, attention to detail is usually very good. The one thing that I'll point out right from the start that could be an improvement, it comes with this. This is a crystal oscillator here and you've got to stick some wires on. Now, the first thing I would say about that, you know, and this is not me being biased, this is the opposite, this is me kind of saying, you know, pointing out something that's it's logical, really. Why is that not mounted on here? It would make more sense to somehow extend the PCB, I don't know, maybe on this side or something. I don't know if there's enough room inside, and, uh, you know, have some solder points on there, but you'll see what I mean when we come to do that in a minute. But nevertheless, you can mount this inside relatively easily. Um, we just need to find somewhere to put it on the board and keep the wires as short as possible. But you can see it comes with the instruction sheet here, a quick uh, install guide. So, yeah, I think this is going to be easy. The hard bit is going to be understanding where to stick that crystal, actually. Uh, you can see it mentions the pin out there with the top view and the little notch there. So you kind of, as you flip it over to sold on the underside, yeah, you could confuse yourself a little bit there. Um, but nevertheless, it should be straightforward and you can see here there's a switch for VGA um, there are some contacts I can't see them on here but we'll have a look in a minute some contacts on the PCB that you can use to solder to a VGA connector so yeah you can actually get VGA out on this which is fantastic for TVs and for video capture and stuff like that So apologies it's starting to rain, but if I switch this on now, hopefully you might just be able to see the display there. Uh, yeah, so as I say, there's no backlight, no front light. Now you can do a front light mod to these. I had a go at that on this exact uh, Game Boy. I didn't share it with you, and I should have done really, because it was awful. I bought one of the proper front light mods. You can, there's a place in the US you can order them from, and I fitted it exactly as per the instructions, and it was just awful awful because you had little patches on the display there where the because you stick something on I forget how you do it but you stick something on there and it doesn't join very well um, and you just get little patches and things on the display and you can see all the illumination at the bottom there you know the little LEDs so you get a brighter bit at the bottom than you do at the top it's just awful the other thing you can do uh, I forget who did it I'll stick his name up here um, is it Ben Venn I think he's done a mod where you can take a screen from an AGS 101 Game Boy Advance and there's an adapter you just basically plug a ribbon adapter and it just plugs straight in as a replacement screen now that might sound desirable until you consider the fact that you're cannibalizing a screen from an AGS 101 Game Boy uh, Advance yeah they should really stay in the Game Boy Advance I think um, but you can do that now Somebody else on YouTube has fitted one of these McWill screens that I'm going to fit to this, and he's compared it to his AGS-101 screen in his uh, Game Boy Color. And uh, it's better, the McWill screen is better than that, it's better than an AGS-101. So yeah, that's uh, something to consider as well. I think Ben Venn is doing a screen for this as well, so there will be three you know, things to pick from there. But what I would say is McWill is based in Europe, actually. Um, so not only has he got the you know pedigree of the screens he's developed before behind him, if you're in Europe, you're going to get no taxes and import fees and things, and you're going to have cheaper postage, I would assume, rather than order from the states. So yeah, that's something to consider. Although there might be you know a slight price difference there. Um, I read somewhere I think the Link screens are selling for about I think seventy dollars or something. That's probably going to go up because that's a pre-order price. So yeah, the Ben Venn screens might be slightly cheaper. But as I say, depending where you are in the world, um, 
yeah, you might be faced with import taxes and things if you order from the States. So we'll have a look at the screen here, so if we can just carefully uh, shake it out there. So we've got the screen protector still on. Best thing to do is to leave that in place up until the point where you're ready to just, uh, you know, reassemble the case there. So you've got the ribbon down here, and that, all you do is unplug the old screen, plug the new one in, and then there's a wire or two, as I say. Well, and then the ones for the crystal oscillator as well. Um, so yeah, it looks really sweet and tidy. There are no connectivity points on this side so there's no worries about anything shorting on that side of the PCB as far as I can see. It's amazingly small the assembly here but it needs to be I guess. And the pins here are marked R, G, B, H and V so you've got horizontal sync, vertical sync, red, green and blue. Uh, and then you'll need a ground connection as well to go to your VGA connector. So I've modded this before as I say and as a result I've got a brand new uh, bezel on the front you can buy these for a couple of pounds on eBay but do check the quality of the logo here because there are some super cheap ones from China where the text the font's not the right and the, the, the print's awful but you can find like ones like this that look just as good as the original one um, and you can see I put a screen protector on that as well actually so that bit I don't need to worry about but I would suggest to you if you're going to go as far as replacing the screen order yourself a new one of these uh, bezels here and replace that at the same time so in order to get inside this we've got uh, tri wings so we've got tri wing there 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 and this, there might be one or two under the battery but I think there isn't six in total yeah, there's a couple down here, can you see that? So I've got the screws out, we can then separate the two halves. So you can see it's pretty tidy and clean in there. As I say, I've been in this before. So the other thing I would point out, if the front of your screen is good, stick something over here, sellotape it just onto the edges, a piece of bubble wrap or something, just so you don't scratch the underneath of your screen while you're working on it. Now, there are some screws holding the main board in here, as you can see down here. But uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to detach. You can just lift these little clips up here, one on each side, super carefully. Alternate just to make sure it's up. And then the screen will come out when we're ready. Um, but if we just get these little screws out here now. So put all the screws out of the way because you don't want to be scratching your screen up. So then the board should just come out. If you look at the ribbon, we can just literally pull it away. Now you can see you won't have this. Um, because I had to do a mod, I had to trim some of the uh, stuff off here actually. Uh, and because I've done the previous mod to this, we've got a piece of plastic missing there. And that could me, could cause me some interesting challenges in fitting the screen. I might have to try and uh, glue it or something, because you will have a piece of plastic down here that supports the bottom of the screen to stop it moving. Um, but we will need to trim off a piece here. I think this, this side piece here needs trimming off in order to, you know, that this new screen can fit. So the normal process, and it shows this in the service manual, in order to get the screen out, you twist the case. So you you know you pull this top corner here down as you pull uh, the, the right hand corner up like that. Can you see that? Just twisting it, and then twist it the other way. And yeah, you, you heard the sort of noise there. You, you can get that, 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 that's the sort of noise you'll hear. And uh, it will then uh, snap off. But as, as I say, in my case, in my case, I say I have added these bits of tape just to help secure it in, but there we go, it's coming out. I'm super careful, I don't want to mark or damage the original screen because bear in mind we can reuse that. You know, it's worth putting that into storage somewhere. Um, I'll stick a screen protector on that and then stick it inside an ESD bag, I think. So I'm just trial fitting it here. Bear in mind, it's still got its protector on the front here. You know, you don't want to do this when this, that's off. Uh, and I'm just lining it up to see where it's going to go. So as long as it's right up to the top, and as I say, in my case, I'm missing something down here, but I might just hot glue that or something later. Um, you can see the overhang here. So you do need to just, I would say, cut a little piece out of there. I've seen people cut that entire thing off. I don't think that's the right approach, actually. I think you just need to cut little piece out of here to accommodate that by the looks of things because if I just hold that in place uh, there and then just flip it over you can see it's almost lined up it's a bit far to the right here actually uh, it needs to go yeah it's gonna kind of look like that so you're gonna see a little bit of the silver um, surround there I suspect that might mean the screen is a tiny 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 bit smaller 
but you know what we're not going to notice too much i think and i think the improvements is going to make it worth uh, worth it so we'll just pull these buttons out they're just going to be getting in the way while i'm doing this so i've kind of made sense of this now i've spent a few minutes looking at the diagram and it's obvious what i need to do so here's our crystal that's the top view of the crystal pins one and four need to go to vcc and um, you tap VCC off on C28, uh, I think it's the this capacitor here, so we'll check that in a minute. Uh, I need to inspect with the magnification to make sure I get the right cap. So yeah, what, you're going to have a wire coming off there to two of the pins on here, to pin one and pin four. Pin two on that crystal is the ground. You can take ground from somewhere like here. But the, there might be a ground nearby. We'll inspect that in a minute. And we'll work out where best to place this because I would suggest you're better off mounting this somewhere on the PCB. Uh, yeah, I think so. You're better off mounting it on somewhere on the PCB. Maybe use uh, a, a double piece of double sided scotch pad or uh, something like that. I've got some, I think. Um, and then after you've soldered it all on with really super short wires, just put a piece of Captain tape over it. And then the final thing that comes from this is the clock signal. And the clock signal comes out on pin 3. And you can see here on the PCB, somewhere like that there. Maybe somewhere here if it'll fit. Maybe on top of the CPU or down here, I don't know. You need to think carefully because, you know, we might have issues with clearance there. Although, you would expect that at least the height of that crystal there you know you can get away with so you could mount it somewhere on the PCB but I'm thinking up here actually um, which would mean I need another ground so we'll find another ground for that I think and that's the way I would do it I would use uh, I've got a double sided pad here I can just cut a tiny piece of this off stick it on there stick the crystal on top of it and then I'll have the connections exposed on this side and I can solder on the short wires and that's the best way to do it is just have really super short wires use Kynar wire which I've got I'll show you that and then after you've finished, stick a little piece of captain tape over the top of the crystal connections there, just to make sure that nothing can short on them. But we need to stay away from that post there, that whole area there, because that marries up, you know, with a screw point, point as well. So don't get any solder on that if you're going to do one of these mods yourself. And then finally, the clock signal comes off on pin 3. So pin 3 of this crystal, the final connection, is going to go to the top point here on the little PCB, that little gold pad. So yeah, again we'll use Kynar for that. So I think what we'll do is we'll solder the wire on there, I'll fit that into here, make sure the wire is passing through, you know, out the side, it's probably going to come out this side here somewhere. Um, and then what we can do is solder it onto the point here is the final thing just to get the, the length correct and I might if I can I'm going to use a shielded wire the reason being is you can have a clock signal coming across uh, the, the wire to that pin on there you know from the crystal and you want it to be as short as possible and preferably shielded um, you'll just get less chance of interference with the clock signal there although I would assume for a pretty short cable it should be all right so I'll show you a few things up closer here so C28 is the middle one, not the left capacitor there, the second one. Um, and in terms of which pad, it does say in the instructions says the upper pad, but you can confirm that. You see we've got a ground over here, we're on continuity test here, and if we measure one side of the cap there, we've got a resistance, it's not beeping, and the bottom side, we've got a short, so the bottom side is ground. Now bear in mind, we're trying to tap off VCC, you know, voltage collector collector, 5 volts probably. Um, so we're going to take it from the side that's not connected to ground, which is the top side, the side nearest this connector here. Um, and as I say, it's the middle of those three caps there, top top connection. And I guess that's killing two birds with one stone. You can see what I mean about taking a ground. You know, using that method, I could find grounds. We've got grounds on those two caps there, certainly. But we might have grounds somewhere up here on some of these components as well. Yeah, bottom of that one there. Can you see that? So, you know, there's lots of places you could try and uh, find a ground. The top of that one, there's ground as well. And when you're working on something like this, I would uh, recommend getting an ESD wrist strap, actually, just so you minimise the risk of any ESD damage to the uh, board or the mod. So you can see the little crystal there. Let's just uh, tap that out. So you can see the four points underneath. It's a surface-mounted crystal. This is designed to be surface mounted but uh, yeah anyway that's not what we're going to be doing so if we flip it over 
Uh, I might have to put you on macro, but somewhere on here there should be a little dot. In fact, you can see it. You cannot see it. I don't think the dot is in the top corner here. So that corresponds with that there. So if we rotate it around, yeah. So the way that's sat now, and you have to trust me, the dot is in the bottom left corner here. And this is where things get confusing because obviously we're going to be wanting to flip this over and solder on the other side. So just be mindful of that. Um, that you you know, depending on where you put it on the board, that you totally aware of where the dot is on the underneath and that you can then transpose the connections here so what i think i'll do is i'm going to mount it here let's just put it in position it's not going to be uh yeah there we go so i'm going to mount it there with a double-sided pad i think uh, but before i do that i'm going to work out which is the best way to put it with respect to you know we need to get these two connections here to the uh, VCC connection there, a ground which I'll probably take from that cap there I think because it's nearest and we'll have a super short wire there, a super short wire here that's the ground and VCC dealt with and then we just got that one wire coming off to the top board and as I say we can deal with that last after I've got the screen into the uh, top you know the front if you like with the wire coming off and I can then just literally line everything up and trim that wire to the exact length so hopefully you can just see that. What I've done is I've just flipped it over and stuck a little red dot with a permanent marker there, nearest to this corner. So I know where pin one is, um, you know, when it's transposed. And I can just, I'll draw a little diagram myself now based on which way I mount it on the PCB. So I know which one's one, which one's two, which one's three, which one's four. So there you go. I've used a double-sided pad. It's not quite as straight as I would have liked it. But anyway, that's mounted there with pin one here you know this is where the red dot is nearest to this corner now this means now that I can literally just uh, join these two up together and have wire coming down to here so that's my VCC dealt with this pin here is ground I've tested connectivity and the top side of that cap there is ground so you can have a super short wire there so those are going to be two super short wires and that's three of the connections dealt with and then all you've got is this one here that's going to go to the screen yeah, as I say, we'll deal with that last. So I'll solder up these two wires now and then show you. So something to point out before you start soldering, he's got a warning here, you know, your maximum temperature you solder on 280 degrees C or 540 Fahrenheit. Uh, otherwise, you know, you can damage the solder pads as he's put here on the Game Boy uh, mod kit or the actual Game Boy Color itself, probably. So we'll just get a little bit of solder on uh, pin one. So I'll just clean the tip of the iron here. Uh, and as I say, I marked it. So our pin one is in this corner here, and we just need to just add a bit of solder and flux. Do you solder containing flux, or you'll just get awful connections? Yeah, so we've got a little bit of solder on there. We'll stick a little bit of solder up here as well, because that's the uh, same connection on the other side. That's VCC. So we've got two little bits of solder there. Uh, and just to help you, uh, you know, when you're flipping this profile around, understand which pin's which, as long as you've marked where pin 1 is, and I have, it's this one here. When you look at this diagram in terms of trying to understand where the next pin is, we know we know we've just soldered the point there. And then if you're like, well, where's pin 4? It's, if you look, this is the narrow, narrower orientation here, and you've got a wider orientation that way. So the way this is sat on here, the narrower orientation's here. So it's quite simple to logically go, okay, well, this must be the same side here because it's the thinner side. So we know where pin one is, that's here. So therefore, this must be pin four. You know, these two, you know, you've got a lot longer distance between those pins and those pins, which means that these are three and, uh, three and two over here on that side does that make sense so as long as you've got your dot there you know where pin one is on the underside you can easily work out just by using a bit of logic there you know and the same thing applies with this side you know if you want to work out where pin two is we know that pin two is on the same side here as pin one in terms of the length orientation so here's pin one well if you go up this way that's the shorter orientation so it's not that one this is the longer orientation so that must be pin two and then obviously the logic dictates that that's got to be pin 3. So next the fiddly bit, and uh, it's not that fiddly but it is when I'm at a distance like I'm here because the camera is in between. Again just add a little bit of solder super carefully onto the top of that cap there. So hopefully you can see tin that. Don't heat it for too long because what will happen these small components, well capacitors in general, you shouldn't eat them for very long anyway because uh, ceramic caps because they can break from too much heat but uh, the, the wider problem or the larger problem is if you heat these little caps too long both sides can become 
superheated if you like so the whole cap comes off on the iron so just you know gently heat there just as you saw me do for a second or two and so you've got a little bit of solder that's all you need so we'll cut a piece of kynar now and uh, we can sort of gauge the length here just put it in position we know it's going to go from there to here but the other thing we want to do is i'm going to join it up to this one as well and the simple way of doing that is to ex extend the, the length of this where we cut it and then just remove a piece of the, the covering and just solder it completely across you'll see what i mean in a minute but if we sort of say well okay from there to let's say over here that's going to give us enough length now sorry the cables flips off over here yeah that should give us enough length now to solder from the cap to here and to there carefully just uh, in fact let's try and do it on the end here just carefully just grab it and pull a little bit yeah you might not be able to see that there's a tiny little bit at the end exposed there so that's enough for that side and I'll do a longer piece on this side you know I'll remove a good I don't know four millimeters or so in order that I can bend it up and solder it straight across those two to join them together yeah so you can sort of see what I mean I've got an extended piece there because that's going to go across those two I'll make it nice and straight and it'll come from that point there down here and solder onto that so sorry the camera keeps moving just ever so slightly there you know I've got a little bit of uh, perspective change um, and we'll, we'll do this one first here we'll just uh, try and hold it in position I cannot see what I'm doing here it's the problem of trying to do videos yeah make sure that's on yeah it is you, can move, you know you can move the wire it's hold on there try not to move it too much because you'll fracture the uh, kainite it's only a single strand but then what we can do you can see if I just pull that down you can see that's at the right point here so we just need to just very carefully uh, just try and bend this up and I'll use the players to strain that out I'll show you in a sec yeah again very fiddly to film but you can sort of see what I'm trying to achieve here so I'm going to solder this side first so we'll just get a bit of solder onto the uh, iron there and just try and get that to join it's not going to be that easy because of let's say I'm at a distance I think that's joined and then we can just carefully straighten that wire press it down and again solder the next point you might have to reflow both at the same time here because as you heat one obviously it's going to uh, the heat will spread and you might get a bad connection on the other there we go and if we carefully and if we carefully just trim off the extra piece of wire there yeah so we're on macro so you can see yeah I mean that could be straighter but you know what both pins are joined and they're both joined to VCC so that bit's nice and easy and done and as I say we're going to do the same thing with here I won't show you this I'll just show you the result we're going to solder a little bit of solder on there to start with I'll tin that one up as well and then going to have another piece of this kind of R from here to the top point on that cap there and uh, that's those connections are done we just need to just fit the screen and do the final wire and there we go you can see that side done as well now what I would say is that wire is so small there it's easy to cut the you know the plastic covering off on one side before you start soldering on them when you cut it to length it's going to be so short there that you would struggle to use you know a pair of cutters to try and trim a bit off because it's kind of the covering melts super easy so just heat the end there the solid you know the, the sheathing if you like on the very end with the sort of solder on flux and it just melts back very slowly a little bit and then you can just you know solder it onto the point you've pre uh, tinned on the end of the cap there so that's that bit done now what I will do now is just clean up with some IPA and a cotton bud just to clean all this flux off here and just make this look super tidy and then we'll work on the uh, screen so in order to get this in just the right position it needs to be kind of like that there so what we're going to need to do is trim the uh, this you know the plastic edge here from about this point here and uh, down here so this little piece here if you like will clip into you know the bit that's gone here so I need to just carefully mark this up and then I'll just snip out the pieces using wire snips it's quite easy to do and you can use pliers just to snap the edge off I'll show you that but bear in mind you'll have a piece of plastic along here I've got that missing on mine so that could cause me some challenges in mounting this you can see on the diagram here is indicating what, which piece you cut out you cut this little piece out here and the way I'm going to do this is I'm holding the screen right up to the top here 
right to the side. I flipped it over just to make sure you know it's in the right place. It doesn't look like it's in the right place now, but trust me, it uh, it will be. Um, and I need to just make a mark here. I need to make a mark here like this, uh, super carefully. And I also need to make a mark up here. And it's quite easy to do this one because you can see the screw mount there. It's literally at the very edge, you know, if you draw a straight line from the edge of the circle of the screw mount, that's where you want to go across here. So, yeah, I can uh, just mark that up this way, actually. It wants to be like that there. And then I can carefully use the cutters here just to snip that edge. And I'm going to leave a little bit on the inside just so that if I cut too much off, I can, uh, you know, I'll have to file it down. You see, like that, a little snip. Can you see the little mark I put there? Again, just a little snip. There. And as I say, I'm going on the insides of these so that I won't cut too much off. I'd rather cut too little off and then just have to file it down a little bit. And once you've made those little snips like that, you can more or less just twist. Can you see that? Just carefully twist a little bit like that. And then if you just wobble each way, you can actually break off small pieces of plastic like that. Yeah, hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. And I'll try and show you a bit more, a few more examples of how to do this. You can just use snips like this. If they're super sharp, just carefully to get sort of under the very edge. You want to be careful with your screen. Obviously, you know, this is the thing. This is why a lot of people replace the screen protector at the same time. And just snip the odd bit like that you can see it's gradually coming back that can you see that and we're pretty flat here so we're almost there now because I didn't cut as much off I've had to keep edging up just a little bit a little bit a little bit until I've got this piece here can you see that that's lined but obviously this needs to go right in here and you can see can you see that there yeah you can see that there hopefully I've still got a little piece to cut off here. This is why it's better to cut off less, because you can gradually get it in position. Make sure it's lined at the top here like that with respect to that piece, and that's in. Uh, and then just gradually trim back, trim back, trim back until we get to this edge here, fitting in there, and then we're done. Now, the other thing you can do as you're perfecting this, actually, is use the soldering iron to melt the plastic. But bear in mind, you're going to get toxic fumes, so you need to do it in a very well-ventilated uh, room. Because you can still see, even though I've been slicing, slicing, slicing just a little bit, there's still a little bit there. So I'm just going to use the soldering iron just to touch the uh, that bit of plastic and try and melt it back just a little bit, because it's going to give me finer control. I'll see if I can show you what I mean. Obviously, you need to clean the tip of your iron afterwards, but just gently, gently, gently. There we go. And then I'll just clean the tip, don't breathe the fumes in, and we'll just give that another try. Obviously, I'll let it cool down, don't start sticking the screen in when it's uh, a bit molten. Yeah, you can still see we're still not quite there, so I need to just melt a little bit more. Not much, one millimetre. Yeah, so that melting technique works really well because I could just gradually adjust it. And you can see, hopefully, that that is spot on in terms of the alignment there. You can you get this kind of silver overhang around the edge there. You know that's normal, but uh, I do think it means the screen size is going to be ever so slightly smaller. But nevertheless, it's going to be a really nice screen. So we're getting near the end now. The only thing we need to do is have a wire uh, for the uh, clock, and I think if I remember, serves the pad is at the top here. If we just pull this out. Um, yeah, it's that position there. So I couldn't find any super thin shielded uh, wire actually. It's all too thick, it's, you know, it's not right for the job. So anyway, we'll just get a tiny bit of uh, solder and flux onto that pad there. Yeah, be super careful, you can see, just about manage that a tiny little bit. And then we'll just, uh, again, just tin the uh, carrying art a little bit there. I think I'll just trim that back a bit. I don't think you can see, that's a little bit long, I only want a little bit there. Just rotate this around, hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. And then we'll just carefully attach this wire. This is where magnification can really help, actually, when you're doing little things like that. I think I've managed that. Yeah, it's joined there, you can see that.
Yeah, if you're going to do a lot of these mods, get something like this. You know, they have helping hands as well. You know, these things that come off here and you can clip things on and stuff, and it just helps hold things while you solder. And uh, illumination as well. But that's now going to go on the inside of here like this. We can get our screen into position. Um, I think I'm going to put something in here to support this actually. I might just stick three slivers of double sided pads, you know, the, uh, the same things I used to support the crystal there, stick them together and then stick them on the inside of here so that it acts as a kind of like a sponge to hold that to so that side there. Um, so the next thing to do is deal with this root and this wire. I've soldered it sort of from that angle there so that we can uh, just carefully bend it and it'll come out in a different position now. So, yeah, there you go. So you can see it's coming out of the little cavity there. So that's nice and easy to join to the top board. So I'm going to secure this screen in now. I'll do what I did previously. I'll have a little bit of tape up here, a little bit of tape down here, and as I say, I'm going to have one of those sticky, a sticky sponge thing all the way down the length of there. I'll show you in a minute, but just to hold it. And if we just flip this over, just make sure that it's totally straight there in terms of alignment. But before I do that, I'm going to remove the screen protector. I'll make sure the inside of the screen here is super clean. I'll use a microfiber polishing cloth. If I just lift this out, I'll show you. Yeah, I'll use a microfiber on there because there's the odd particle on there. Just make sure that's free from fingerprints. And then I'll peel the screen protector back and we'll stick it in. So I'll just carefully clean the uh, screen here with the microfiber. I don't think I touched it to be honest, but yeah, I don't want to take any chances. So finally, I'm going to commit to putting this in here, so I need to work out where the edge of the protector is now. I can't see the thing. Yeah, it does because of the whole thing there, so just carefully. And you want to peel this off super carefully, and then stick it straight in. Careful not to pull the screen apart while you do it. And then when I get the screen in, because I've got that sticky thing on the right, I'm going to get it top aligned and to the right. And then push it into position. I think that's it. Just flip that over. Yeah, that looks nice and straight. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to stick a couple of little pieces of tape just to secure that. But it's held with this here anyway. And the notches and things here, you know, you can see the shape there. It, you know, and here it can't slip downwards. But bear in mind, in an, uh, your Game Boy Color, you'd probably still have this piece of plastic here supporting it as well, so you won't need the bits of tape and stuff. You probably wouldn't even need this here, to be fair. Yeah, so for me personally, as you can see, I stuck a bit of tape over here and a tape up there, just to give it a little bit more support, but it doesn't really need it, I don't think. But then all we need to do is, you know, get the buttons back in, put the uh, PCB back in place, bend the wire over, solder it on the corner. I'll leave a tiny little bit of distance on this, I think, and maybe bend it upwards and down just so that it's easy to disassemble it and stuff uh, you know in future so I got the buttons back in here I'm gonna clean these with IPA anyway it doesn't really need doing because I've done this before but uh, you know what it's like say you've had it out you could have little bits of dirt got on there bits of the plastic or something you know something could have could have got onto those so why not clean those up while you're here and at the same time, clean up the contacts on here as well. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain by just giving those a quick clean with a bit of IPA. Make sure your speakers clean on these as well because these get dirty and it's a diaphragm. So, you know, a slight amount of dirt on there and it can affect how it sounds. So making sure everything's seated correctly in there, we'll just carefully get the speaker into the corner and get the board into position and I think at this point I'm going to get the three screws back in here and incidentally you can get these three screws mixed up because they've got a Phillips head you know a cross head there the six screws for the back are longer and they've got tri-wing so you know just make sure you get the the cross head ones in here you shouldn't be putting tri-wings into the board uh, and I think that leaves these two here for the case that's right uh, and then obviously the two there and the two there. So we just need to just join this wire now. So again, I'll use the solder just to, you know, heat the uh, end of the sleeve there. I think that's it. Yeah, it is. It's exposed some of it. Uh, and I've already pre-tinned the crystal um, point there. So if we just carefully uh, pull that wire down into position while I heat that solder point, 
Oh, that should be it. Yeah, there we go. I've got a good join. Uh, and then what we'll carefully do, bear in mind that the, the ground contact of the uh, case comes on here. So I'm just going to just carefully pull that wire down uh, like that out of the way. Uh, and then we'll just check that. Yeah, I think that's going to be all right. If you look at that there, yeah, that should have enough clearance. So before we forget, the final thing is just to make sure the housing's up here and we need to reconnect the screen. Well, the new screen. So yeah, this could be a bit fiddly. This is the sort of thing that might be easier when the uh, back's off, but we should be able to do it. Yeah, can you see? Can you see that's gone in there now? So I'll just push it down as much as it'll go, and then carefully just pull the shoulder things down here, one at a time. Might need to try and do them both at the same time, actually, just very carefully. Yeah, there we go. And when we come to look at the VGA out, it says as before, it's horizontal, vertical, red, green, blue, that's five, and then one wire for ground. And then you just switch at the bottom of the PCB to go between those two contacts there. Yeah, don't forget your uh, power slider here. Now this can only go in one way, I think. Yeah, it goes in like that. You've got to make sure it's aligned with the uh, thing here, because otherwise you could snap it off. Just uh, maybe to test it carefully, just to make sure it's working. Uh, I thought there was something went on this side, but I don't see it. Let's just carefully just put the lid back on. I'll put some batteries in, and we'll just give it a try. So I'll switch it on, see what happens. Oh yes, wow, that looks amazing, absolutely amazing. Now I've not got no cartridge in at the moment, let's just go find a cartridge. Now I've got the EverDrive here, let's give that a go. Bear in mind it's not screwed together just yet. Yeah, look, the um, text corrupt there, I know what that is. I had this before, because I've not used this Game Boy in ages. The uh, cartridge here, and uh, the cartridge has been sat on a shelf, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of oxidisation in there, so we're just going to need to clean this up I think. And if you've never cleaned a Game Boy cartridge, same thing again, IPA is your friend, cotton bud with some IPA. Just push a cotton bud in and just gently wipe across there. Can you see the mug that's come off that? Yeah, it's just a little bit of oxid oxidisation for not having been used in a long while. But the same thing can happen when it's just sat inside uh, a Game Boy for a long period of time as well. So I'll switch it on again, hopefully we should get the Game Boy menu now. Yeah, you can see it says Nintendo now, it wasn't saying that before. And uh, I don't know what game's in here, let's just put start. Might be Bubble Bobble or something, I think. So, let's see if we can get you a better look at the screen there. Sweet. Fantastic. Look at that display. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, Marco's done it again. He's done a fantastic job. I think he's working on one of these screens for... Um, was it the Neo Geo Pocket? I, I think it might have been the um, Nomad, actually. The Sega Nomad. I don't know if he's produced that yet or not, but... Yeah, I hope he does one of those, because that will make that a super desirable system to have as well. I mean, it already is a super desirable system, but it's not got a very good screen. So before I close this video up and we have a quick look at a few more games, I thought I'd just reiterate on what we've done here. Um, the crystal is upside down. I mounted it with a double-sided pad, just so that it sticks in position. Um, strictly speaking, I should put something over that. I think I might just do that now. Stick a piece of captain tape just over that, just to protect it. You could just stick a piece of captain tape under here, because there's nothing else metallic other than this, this bit of metal here that could potentially uh, short to that. But yeah, we uh, took the 5 volts from here, from the middle cap, C28, the top uh, pin on the middle cap there, to a pin there, and I just extended the wire, you know, I cut an extended piece of the sleeve off so that we uh, could join it up there as well. So both of those pins, five volts. Ground, I measured connectivity to the little cap here, the top pin of that cap. Bear in mind, not all board revisions might be the same. You might find slightly different revisions, I don't know, but I think for the most part they're gonna be the same. And then the final connection here was the clock you know, that, that's the pin that goes to the uh, that pad there. As you can see here, the top pad there, pin three. Um, yeah, so that's pin three. Um, and that's it really, just connect the ribbon up and we're all done. So I've got a tiny piece of captain tape here and I think, uh, I'm not really sure where best to stick it actually. I think we'll just kind of overlay it a little bit there, like that, and then just try and push it down so that it's stuck on a few different things there. And that's all you really need to do.
it just needs a little bit of isolation as I say could be a bit tidy by sticking it on the underside there but I did think that you, you're adding some extra support to the actual crystal there you know holding it onto the PCB rather than the crystal coming flowing off because you never know the glue could weaken on that and it could start floating around in there but uh, yeah just make sure your wire does not get trapped um, I'll just move that a little bit actually just try and move it up a little bit there and then you can just slide that back together and get the screws in um, before you tighten the screws up, just make sure you've not got, you know, uh, a, a bulge or anything like that where it's not going back together because you could uh, break something. But I think that's okay. Let's get the screws in. You can get these tri wing screwdrivers from eBay, actually. It's the same tri wing that people use with the, the Wii, um, the DS Lite, etc. So, yeah, they're super easy to find. It costs you like a pound or something for that screwdriver. I tell you what would be nice actually if in the kit there was an optional you could get one of these with it that would be nice but also I don't know two or three inches of Kynar because as you've seen you don't need much maybe I've probably not used more than an inch or an inch and a half of Kynar so if you can include some Kynar cable as well and maybe a small piece of double sided pad like that um, that you could you know, then cut to size yourself you know I mean if you put a whole piece like this you know a big chunk of it you could actually cut the slivers like I've done to put on the side there as well on the other side you know to keep the screen away from the other side um, they're all just small ideas really to make the kit a little bit easier for people that perhaps haven't got some of the bits but you can buy Kynar cheaply you can buy double-sided pads pretty cheaply but I think that would just make it a little bit easier if those things were included certainly the Kynar and a double-sided pad and even better would be if there was any way that Marco could perhaps revise the PCB and stick that crystal on the PCB. Uh, but then again, you'd have large wires, as you've seen, the way I've managed to mount this, the wires are super short. Get the batteries back in, get the flap on. It's an aftermarket flap back, you can see it's a subtly different colour. Sweet. Now bear in mind I haven't done the VGA mod, I think I'm going to revisit that, I might do part 2. Before I do that I want to work out the best way of getting a VGA connector out of here. Um, you could repurpose you know, one of the existing holes or something like you could remove the com port there and use that, I don't know. Yeah I don't know where else you could, you could do it, you'd perhaps have to cut a hole somewhere and I'm thinking maybe use um, a strip of pin header or somewhere like that, you know you need 5 connections, red, green, blue. Uh, oh, if actually it's six H V and ground, so you can have a six pin connector or something on the side, and then you just need to make a cable to fly off to a VGA connector. But I think I'll revisit that in another video. I'm going to perhaps do the Tyra Lynx VGA out before I do that. Just, uh... Oh yes. Just try a bit of double dragon. Sorry, it's hard to get the reflection off there. You can I see a reflection of me in the camcorder? I think that looks sweet. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's going to be hard to try and keep it still while I press the buttons. That's the problem. This is where the uh, VGA would come in handy. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening here. Sweet. Let's try and skip this so it goes straight to the game. That looks amazing, absolutely amazing. And I'll show you the difference between the old screen and this screen. So you can see at a distance here, and at various viewing angles, you can see the screen super clearly. Lovely colour there, really vibrant. And there you go, compared to the old screen, can you see, you know, you've got to get it just the right line, just the right angle to see anything. It's, uh, yeah, much harder work trying to see that screen.
Yeah, so Will has uh, done a fantastic job. I think in some ways it's better and easier to mount than the Link screen and the Game Gear screen, actually. You know, there's fewer wires and things there. Um, and I don't think it's that difficult to mount that crystal, actually. I think you'll agree it looked okay the way I mounted it. So I'll post some links down below. You can order these either directly from McWill or from somewhere like dragonbox.de. Uh, I think they're about 70 euros plus shipping. You might get them slightly cheaper. I don't know if you look around. Maybe McWill sells them a little bit cheaper. I don't know. And I'm assuming that McWill offers the uh, fitting service that he did with the uh, Lynx and Game Gear. So you can ask him about that as well while you place an order. So we're on Super Macro here, just so you can have a super close look. Yeah, that looks absolutely amazing. Bit of Pokemon Crystal. So yeah, thanks very much to McWill for sending this for review. As I said from the start, I'm kind of biased towards McWill. Um, if I'm honest, he's done such an amazing job. The screen is fantastic. Colours are awesome. He's uh, obviously picked a decent screen here as well. It's not like the cheapest of the cheap. This is uh, really good, as you can see. The colours are vibrant. It's nice and sharp, and there's no interference. On one or two of the captures, you might have noticed it looking a bit wavy and stuff. I'm not seeing that to the naked eye here. That's perhaps just uh, uh, an artefact of the camcorder capturing. But hopefully you can see it's rock solid stable. Well, I don't know, through the viewfinder I can see some wavy lines, but to my eyes I don't see anything. It's super clean and sharp. I do hope you found the video interesting. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.